Hello, this is Daniel from Sound Headquarters. Today we are going to be transforming this home studio. Here is a sneak peek of the finished product and a sound test for you. So here is the beginning room. This is a home studio in a basement. And as you can see, the walls are very bare. The floor is just laminate and the ceiling is completely bare as well. So we will be treating all of those surfaces. So here are the tools that we'll be using. And here is a close up of the drywall anchors that I use and the flush mount hangers that I use. Now this is just what's available to me within the Toronto area, but you can use the equivalent of whatever is available uh, regionally to you. So I'm starting with this panel right here because that bulkhead above me is uh, taking up some space into the, into the side walls. And whatever height we have to mount this panel is the height that we will match around the entire room. So I'm just getting my center marks both the center of the wall and then two inches down from the height of the bulkhead. And I'm using my level to get level T markings, which you can see right here. And I use that as my guide to align my flush mount hanger and mark for the holes to drill them out. So we're using the drill bit that came with the drywall anchors. This is the correct size drill bit to use for the anchors. So we're going to drill both of these, both of these holes out. And once these holes are drilled, we can hammer in the drywall anchors. So once both of these are hammered in, we can get our flush mount hanger and the screws that came with our anchors and screw in the flush mount. So we screw in the flush mount with this side with the hanger facing up. And then on the panel side, we put the same hanger but facing down so they interlock. And that's how we mount these panels. So once this mount is screwed in, I'm going to use my hammer just to tap the mount to perfectly align with our level T markings. And then once that's aligned, I'll just use the drill again to finally secure it into its final place. Now it's ready to mount. So as you can see, we have enough room below that bulkhead to mount these panels. And now that that first one is mounted and level, we can move on to the rest of the room matching the height of this panel. So I measured from the floor to the top of my T-marking uh, just to keep it consistent around the whole room. And I'm going ahead and getting this one in. These are the two one foot by four foot panels that we did for this client. And now I'm working on this middle section here. So first I find my middle mark and then I subtract the total length of that wall by two panels, which is 27 and a quarter inches. And then what I'm left with is 11 inches. I divide that by three because we have three gaps and I get 3.6. So I round to three and a half inches and I just measure that gap based off of my middle mark. That's gonna be the center gap for our two panels. Now I measure in from my, from my mark of uh, the center of each panel, which is just above 13 and a half for my 27 and a quarter inch panels. If you made 24 inch panels, this would be 12 inches. So we're just using those markings to find the centers of where our hardware needs to be. Because once our hardware is placed, then we just have to mount the hardware onto the panels and we can hang them. So here we are getting these two 27 and a quarter inch panels hung. And once these two are up, this will represent the rear wall of this basement studio. And once they are mounted, we're just going to level them with the level. And here's a little shot of our rear wall with all four panels installed. And we are moving on to our side wall. Now, since we're doing base traps in this room, what I'm doing is I am test fitting the base trap tops and bottoms so I can get my measurement on the wall of where the base traps are going to end. And now I will use this mark to measure my distance of the side wall so I know how big my gaps need to be to mount the three acoustic panels that are going onto this wall. So I'm doing the same on both sides of the wall. And now I can measure from where the base trap ends to the rear wall. And once I have those measurements, I just do the same calculations. I find out what my gaps are going to be, and then I can measure and mount all of my panels. So this wall was receiving three full-size panels. And now we're moving on to the other side wall. Now this side wall was just too short to mount two of the panels vertically, 
but it was not short enough to mount them horizontally. So what we did with this client is we mounted the two panels on this side wall horizontally, and we still matched the height with the same height of the panels around the rest of the room, just for aesthetics and for consistency. So you can see we get that bottom one mounted first and the top one mounted, and we left enough space for the light switch and for the base traps on that side wall. So now we're getting our center markings on the front wall. This is very crucial because this is what the center panel will be mounted to, and it's also where we will be using as a reference point for the center of our ceiling clouds, which will be above the mix position. So you can see I'm using my laser level to line up with the center of the wall and also with a mark on the ceiling that I made, which isn't really visible, but that's how we are making sure that everything is centered within this front wall of the control room. This is very visually important and also acoustically important. We want to make sure that we have a solid reference point that we can measure to place our desk, to place our speakers, to place our mix position. This is probably the most important measurement uh, for this studio here. So you can see I'm getting my initial holes for the clouds. And these are 18 inches apart. And in between each cloud is six inches apart because I measure in three inches from my cloud frames to mount my hardware. So here I'm mounting my hardware for the center panel, and this panel will go horizontally. And we decided on this because of that window. We wanted to still have a symmetrical front wall, so we used a one horizontal panel, and we left space between the uh, panel and the base traps for this client. If they do want to add additional absorption, there's room there to add one foot panels. So I am trimming the base trap sides, the side lengths of our one by four lumber, which I have already cut on the table saw at a 45 degree angle just to give a nice flush or fit, but this that's optional, it's not necessary. And you can see the 45 degree angle I cut on the base traps tops and bottoms of our frames here. And there's a close up shot of the sides that are gonna make up our corner trap panels. Now these are not fully framed out base traps like in one of my previous videos. These are four inch thick corner panels. This client did not want anything permanently installed into the structure of this room, as this is a basement, and they still want to have the modular ability to move these panels elsewhere if they need to. So instead of doing fully framed out base traps, this is an option that we did for this client where these corner traps are only four inches thick and they are mounted with L brackets and they can just be removed at a later date if necessary. So you can see I'm getting my rear upholstery put on these frames. And once the rear upholstery is on, we can add our acoustic installation and then finally the front upholstery. So I'm just trimming off the excess and hammering in whatever staples are hanging out. So you can see I'm using safe and sound. This is Rockwool three inch safe and sound insulation, and I'm tucking it into and cutting it to fit the interior of this frame. So once that's all installed within the frame, we can do our front fabric. So I just lay that face down on our fabric and just staple. And th this upholstery method just follows the exact same principles as my previous videos for making um, acoustic panels or ceiling clouds, we start off with all four corners first with light tensioning to make sure there's no wrinkles and the fabric is not caught on any of the corners. And then we go ahead and get our one long side stapled in, the other long side tensioned and stapled in, and the tops and the bottoms. So there is our finished corner panel, our 45 degree corner panels, which is ready to mount inside these corners here. So you can see I'm just getting my final measurements and measuring where these L brackets need to sit. So it's important that we recess these L brackets in to the interior edge of the corner so that they mount within that one by four space on the tops and bottoms of our corner traps. This is so that the hardware is not visible to the naked eye when you are looking at the panel. So here are the L brackets that we are using. And I just mock up and make sure that my measurements are consistent on both sides to make sure that we have a 45 degree uh, final uh, installation angle. So I'm just using my level to make sure all of my marks are consistent and straight and marking out my holes. So you can see here the outer, the outer mark is where the panel is going to finish and the inner marks where I made the holes to drill, that's allowing for that L bracket to stick out enough to screw into the panel, but not far enough that it's gonna stick past the face of the panel, um, which is important. We don't want this, these L brackets to be seen. So once I get the tops and bottoms of these L brackets installed into the wall, exact same drywall anchors and same technique as our flush mount hangers, once those are installed, I can test fit and bend the L brackets if necessary 
Um, wasn't necessary for this for this particular panel. We got the measurements spot on. And you can usually just press fit this panel into place, which you can see I did right there before I went ahead and screwed them in. Just using the screws that come with our flush mount hangers. These are just small Phillips wood screws. And that's just to secure these corner panels so that they don't fall out. So you can see there's the first one installed and you can see that the brackets are not visible. And here are the ones for the second corner trap on the left side of the room installed. And I'll get that, that panel screwed in and installed as well. So there we go, getting it all press fit in and then just screwing in with our small wood screws just to secure the panel from falling or leaning anywhere. And once that is all secured, that then our front wall and all of the walls of the studio are complete. We can move on to the treatment of the ceiling. So there we go. Here is all of the panels and the base trap corner panels installed. So all of the walls are now treated within this room. And now we can start with the ceiling with the cloud panels that we built and installed for this studio. Here's a little walk around. And you can see we kept that height consistent around the entire room. And we can move on to the cloud panels. So we're starting off with the hardware. There's all of our marks, and now we can start working on building the actual frames. So this is the same technique as my previous video, just building these cloud frames. We're using one by four lumber, and these frames are 24 inches wide, uh, which leaves the interior dimensions at a space where we can use our 24 inch wide safe and sound uh, to fit within the frame. So here I'm putting in my middle bracing, and you can watch my previous video for a more detailed uh, breakdown of how I build these cloud frames and how I upholster them. So just getting them built and siting down the boards to make sure there's no irregularities in the wood. And if there are, we place that side of the wood on the rear of the panel so that it's not visible when we um, upholster and, and uh, the panel is visible when it's mounted. So just getting these frames all built. And once we have all three cloud frames built, we will be measuring them against each other and adjusting with the hammer to make sure that since all of these cloud panels are mounting together above the mix position, we don't want there to be any air gaps or any sort of irregularities that just aesthetically won't look good. So you'll see what I do there in a second. So here are the three finished mix position cloud frames. And before I work on the upholstery, this is what we do to make sure that they line up properly. So I just line them up next to each other and I'm using the hammer to adjust these middle bracings either out or in to make sure that they line up nicely with each other. So with these ones, they just had to be hammered out slightly so that the side lengths line up perfectly with each other and there's no air gaps, no uh, weird kind of bows in the wood. That's an important detail step that will save you a lot of headache uh, once the clouds are mounted in the mix position. So here we're just getting our rear upholstery mounted. This is just a poly cotton blend breathable fabric. And we just trim off the excess. And then we can get our acoustic insulation ready to mount. So you can see here, I just trim out the center where the bracing is. If I don't do that trim, the insulation will sag in the center. So we trim that out so that it sits nice and flat. And then we use our nail gun to add some, some nails around the frame just to hold that insulation in place um, just so that gravity over time does not pull on it and the insulation doesn't sag into the fabric. And you can see we get our final upholstery all finished up. So all of those cloud frames are done. Now we're going to move on to the last frame that we need to build on site here. This is the frame in the panel that is going to block out this basement window. This client wanted to block out this window uh, just to block out the light and to block out the sound from the outdoors. And we had to leave a little bit of wiggle room for that alarm wire that you could see uh, in the close-up shot there earlier. So we just made this panel about an eighth of an inch shy of, of fitting completely flush within the, the frame of the window. So now that we have that one done, we're installing that last because once we install that, the room gets very dark. So we're moving on to the hardware for our cloud frames. So we're just getting our screw hooks installed. Now, this particular line, we're not using any drywall anchors because we actually hit stud. So what I did instead was I used my smaller drill bit 
the drill bit that's the just under the size of my screw hooks. And I drilled along that line and just screwed the screw hooks directly into the stud. So that structurally is totally sound, stronger than using the drywall anchors actually because it's directly into stud. And I'm getting my single jack chain installed, ready for, uh, for placement of, and hanging of the panels. So now I'm using my, my front hardware measurements to make my rear hardware measurements. That is 48 inches back from the front um, hardware. And now I'm using my laser level to make a straight line between the rear left and the rear right hardware placements. And it's very important that we use the laser level here uh, just to make sure that everything is totally straight and consistent. And especially with the mixed position cloud, since these are centered to the mixed position and centered to the room, even if this is off by an inch or so, will be really visible to, uh, to the eye. So we take our extra time and care to get these, uh, these hardware placements completely um, straight and level accurate where they need to be. So now I'm just getting that window panel frame upholstered and I'm salvaging a panel from my apartment actually to use the insulation from. Wasn't worth buying a whole new bag of insulation for that small window panel. And here we are just installing the hardware into the cloud frames, the same screw hooks that we use in the ceiling, measured three inches in from both sides, which on our 24 inch cloud frames makes the hardware measurement 18 inches apart. So that is where our measurements are on the ceiling, 18 inches apart and six inches apart from each hardware on the ceiling to account for the three inches in between both panels. Now we ended up taking the chains off of the front hardware here uh, to make that angle nice and tight to the ceiling. This is how the client wanted it with that um, light blocked out for the most part. And now we're just doing our final adjustments here. So our macro adjustments usually are each link of chain. But in this case, since we took the chain out in the front, it is just screwing the screw hook in tighter or looser to, to make those adjustments that all the uh, panel frames line up perfectly with each other. And I'm also using wire tie to, uh, to tie together each panel frame, uh, just to make sure that the clouds act as one big mixed position cloud, they are tied in to each other. So here is our finished product. Here's a little walk around of the room. Uh, we had to use our light because the room was very dark after we blocked out the top light and the window. But here's the finished product, fully treated home studio, ready for production, mixing, recording. Uh, the only thing left for this client to do is to add a rug of their choice and to just use the room and get used to it. If they need anything else, additional absorption, we can help them with that. Thank you so much for watching. This is Daniel from Sound Headquarters. Stay tuned for the next videos. Subscribe, like, share, comment. Thank you so much. Peace out.